Chapter 1.4, Exercise 1 through 8, page 124. And we're going to be working out these odd number of problems that have to do with operations and functions. And we have two functions, f of x equals 2x minus 1 and g of x equals x squared. And the instructions are to find formulas for f plus g, f minus g, and fg, f times g. And so we can simply, we're going to say f plus g is equal to 2x minus 1. And then we're going to add g plus x squared. And then we're going to write in um, standard form, which is the higher powered terms first, which is going to be x squared plus 2x minus 1. And what is its domain? Well, this is a polynomial function. And we can look at the domain of these initial two functions f of x, 2x minus 1, polynomial function, no limitations to domain, g of x equals x squared. And likewise, the operation, these functions add together, so we say our domain is going to be all real numbers, which in interval notation is greater than negative infinity, less than infinity. So that's f plus g of x. Now let's adjacent here, let's say f minus g of x is going to be equal to, we have f is 2x minus 1, and g is minus x squared. Now, if we had more than one term in this g of x, we would have had to put parentheses around here just to make sure we get things straight, but we don't need those really. So if we just subtract out and we're going to have minus x squared, which will be negative x squared in standard form. We have plus 2x minus 1. And this will be our domain is going to be also, all real numbers, greater than negative infinity, less than infinity. And lastly, we have fg, which is f times g of x. That's going to be equal to 2x minus 1. Why did I put these parentheses around this 2x minus 1? The reason we did is because we have to multiply all of f by g. And so we use our distributive property. We get 2x times x squared. That's going to be 2x cubed. And then negative 1 times x squared is going to be minus x squared. And so we say, uh, we just summarize here, fg equals 2x cubed minus x squared. And what is its domain? Well, its domain is going to be like the two before it, all real numbers. And so we're going to go ahead and box in all these answers as correct. This is for f plus g, f minus g, and finally we have f g or f times g.
Okay, let's go to our next odd number problem, which is 3. We have f of x equals square root of x and g of x equals sine x. And just thinking ahead, are we going to have any restrictions in our domain? Yes, we are, because we know that we can't take the square root of a negative number. So this value x, x is going to have to be greater than, greater than or equal to 0. So we already know our, our domain is going to be for these things. Let's go ahead and we'll say f plus g is equal to, we have f square root of x plus g, which would be sine x. And there are no restrictions on the domain restrictions on the sine portion, and we really can't simplify. These are not like terms, so this is going to have to really be our answer for f plus g. Our domain is going to be, well, x is greater than or equal to 0, so we say in interval notation, our lowest possible value is 0, and then all the way up to less than infinity. And then our f minus g, is going to be equal to the square root of x minus sine x and our domain is going to be again 0 to less than infinity. And then finally for fg we're going to have square root of x times sine x. Our domain is going to be, surprisingly enough, from 0 to less than infinity. And usually at this time of the course people ask, are, is this do are these domains always going to be the same for all of these? Well, when you're doing the operations of adding, subtracting, and multiplying, they really pretty much should be. Whatever domain restrictions you have originally are going to carry with you. But let's look at this next problem set. In exercise 5 through 8, find the formulas for f divided by g and g divided by f, given the domain of each. Well, um, we're going to say, uh, let's do this on the left, f over g is equal to square root quantity x plus 3 all over x squared. And in dividing, that creates a new restriction because we cannot divide by 0. So we know that x cannot equal 0, right? Because x squared cannot equal 0. We also know in the numerator that, that uh, I didn't mean to do that. Inside that radical, x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to, we subtracted 3, negative 3. And so to, to look at this, and, uh, to look at this function, that function is going to be pretty much the same, but on a number line, the thing is going to look like this. We have uh, Negative 3 is a critical number, and also 0. And we know that greater than or equal to negative 3, that is a condition. So going to the right, but we know that x cannot equal 0, so that's going to be an open point. So we have between negative 3 
and up to zero, not including zero, and greater than zero. So that's going to be our domain. It's going to be negative three, comma zero, parentheses, union, zero, comma, infinity, close parentheses. So greater than or equal to three all the way to not including zero and uh, greater than zero to less than infinity. So we have our function here and we have our domain. Okay, let's go ahead and put, uh, I'll do g over f. g over f is equal to x squared over square root quantity x plus 3. Now, in this case, this x squared, we have no restrictions. We have x squared in the numerator. So that's not going to be a problem for us at all. But in the bottom here, this, this uh, radical x plus 3, square root of 20 x plus 3, we have x plus 3 is going to be, do we put greater than or equal to 0? No. x plus 3 has to be greater than 0. Why is this not greater than or equal to 0 like we had up here? Well, because we cannot have the new the denominator equal to zero. So we subtract three from both sides of this inequality. We have x is going to be greater than negative three. And there are no restrictions in the uh, domain at all. So we're just gonna, our domain is gonna be just like this. Domain is going to be negative three comma infinity. So there we have our, our function in our domain of this function, the quotient of these two functions, f of x and g of x. Okay, now let's go to our last odd number problem in this set. We have f of x equals x squared, g of x equals square root of point one minus x squared. So. Uh, we're going to have f over g is equal to we have x squared over square root quantity 1 minus x squared. So that's as simple as we can really make. We can't really divide these things out at all. So that's going to be our function. Now our domain. We have no restrictions in the numerator, but in the denominator, we have inside the radical, we have 1 minus x squared has to be not only greater than or equal to 0, but has to be greater than 0 since this denominator here cannot equal 0. And if we uh, go ahead and solve this. We subtract 1 from both sides of this inequality. We have x squared is equal to is, is excuse me, negative x squared. It's greater than negative 1. And then if we multiply this whole inequality by negative 1, we get x squared is less than 1. And what, what this looks like, if you kind of, we can just kind of think about this. If x squared, if x is negative 1, we have 1 minus negative 1 squared is 1 minus 1. That's going to make this thing 0, which it cannot be. And if the thing is, is greater than neg negative 1, between negative 1 and 1, we're going to have this value here uh, greater than 0. 
So we take the square root of both sides of this inequality. We have x, x is going to be less than plus or minus 1. And so it means that, that the domain is going to be between. Let me make a number line. If we put one, negative 1 and 1, we're going to have open point because it does not include and in between. And so in our domain, in interval notation looks like this. Negative 1, comma 1. And that's going to be our function. And this one over here. So the right is going to be our domain. Okay, now for uh, g over f. We have square root of quantity 1 minus x squared over x squared. So already, because our x squared, x, we can't divide by 0, we know that x cannot equal 0. So I already know that. That's going to be a domain restriction for this. And like we had up here, in top in blue, we had 1 minus x squared is greater than 0. This one here is going to be 1 minus x squared is greater than or equal to 0. And so everything is going to be the same as this up here, except we're going to have x is less than or equal to plus or minus 1, meaning that if we just look at a number line, our critical numbers are going to be, again, negative 1 and 1, but also 0. We know that the function cannot equal 0, so that's an open point. We know the function can equal negative 1, can equal 1, but otherwise has to be between negative 1 and 1. So a number line, this is what the thing looks like. And written out, we have our domain is going to be open bracket, negative 1 to 0, close parentheses, union, greater than 0, all the way up to n, including 1, which is enclosed in a bracket. So this is our function, boxed in here in red, and this is our domain. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Good luck in working out the even number problems, and thanks for viewing.